Hi there. This is Lorne Bregitzer, author of Secrets of Recording. This is the first of several upcoming promotional videos for my book. In this video, I will show how to create a backwards reverb using Pro Tools. A backwards reverb added to a vocal track can create a very eerie quality. This is what a vocal sounds like with a backwards reverb blended into it. Will you use me like you used to do? Will you bruise me when I'm inside of you? The first thing you want to do when you're creating a backward reverb is to pick a specific selection. If the backward reverb is run across the entire track, then the end result can sound gimmicky. For this demonstration, we are going to use the first half of a verse of a pop rock song. The first step, which is optional, is to duplicate the track that you're going to apply the backward reverb on. This protects yourself in case you mess up the original timing of the vocal track. At this point, you will want to mute any sends coming from that track. If you are not married to any of the insert effects that you have across the track, you can feel free to deactivate those as well. The next step is to create an auxiliary send from the vocal track. In Pro Tools 8, you can rename the bus by right-clicking the name on the track. In this case, we are going to label it Backwards Verb Send. Now we will want to raise the fader a moderate amount. Now we will reverse the original vocal track. I changed to grid mode so I can select a specific number of bars. This is not necessary, I only do it so that I can keep track of the amount of bars that I'm reversing. Make sure that you highlight plenty of audio before the vocal track comes in. This is because this is the area where the reverb is going to decay. Now go to the audio suite menu and select reverse from the other submenu. Simply click Process and it will reverse the original vocal track. Now solo the newly reversed vocal track and hear how it sounds backwards. The next step is to create an auxiliary input track by going to New, Track, and then selecting Mono, Aux, Input. We will now double click that track so we can label it as Backward Verb Plugin. Next, solo that track and select the input to be Backwards Verb Send from the bus menu which we created earlier. On that auxiliary input track, you need to select a reverb insert. If you want the backward reverb to be stereo, make sure to select a mono slash stereo instance of the plugin. Any good reverb plugin will work. For this instance, I'm selecting Digidesign's Revibe. From here, you can select any preset you want. Pick one that has a fairly long reverb time. Play the backward vocal track through the reverb plugin and adjust the reverb time so that it matches what you want to hear. Again, the longer the reverb time, the more obvious it will be, but it depends on the speed of your source material. Now we need to create a track where we are going to record our backwards reverb. 
Make a new stereo audio track. We are going to solo this track just like we did with the other two tracks. Now we need to go back to the track that has the reverb plugin and set the output to be a pair of unused buses. Right click on the name of the buses on the insert track and now we can select the name to be backwards verb out. Now go back to the audio track that we just made and select the input to be the backwards verb out bus. Double click the name of the audio track and set the name to be backwards reverb. Now we are ready to record the reverb. Put the backwards reverb audio track in record. This next step is extremely important for timing. Make sure to double click in the reversed audio track so you have that exact region selected. This is what helps maintain the timing of the original vocal track. Now record the entire duration of the selection. Now we need to reverse both of the audio tracks. First, the printed reverb track as well as the already reversed vocal track. Double click inside one of the tracks and then shift click the other one to have them both selected. Now go back to the audio suite menu and select reverse from the other sub menu. Now process both of those audio files and you have officially created your backwards reverb. You can now take the backwards reverb track out of record and then optionally delete the auxiliary track that has the reverb plugin. You can now return the vocal track to its original state by reactivating any sends that you had previously deactivated. Now we will blend the backwards reverb in with the original vocal. The blend is exaggerated for the purposes of this video. I hope this video has been informative to you and stay tuned for more promotional videos. If you are interested in learning more of these tips and techniques, go to secretsofrecording.com. There you can learn more information about the book as well as the author.